Hello wet shavers. In this video I'm going to give you my top 10 shaving soap and aftershave mismatches. Coming up next on the Soap Thing Project. Alright, welcome to the project and thank you so much for joining me today. And let's talk about shaving soaps and aftershaves for a minute. So I am somebody who, about eight times out of ten probably, I generally will not buy matching aftershaves when I buy shaving soaps. And there are a wide variety of reasons for that, uh, not the least of which being it keeps the cost of the hobby to a minimum and it keeps the uh, space that it takes up to a minimum. So save space and keep the cost down is, is the two biggest reasons. But with that in mind, I'm going to give you my top 10 favorite shaving soap and aftershave mismatches. So let's get started. Coming in at number 10, we have Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements Big Shave Southwest 2019 and Stetson Original. Now, Big Shave Southwest 2019 is rosewood, white sage, and white musk. I get pretty heavy rosewood and the sage, but I don't get hardly any musk with this. But this is like taking a taking a trip out into the desert. It smells excellent, I think. And the Stetson Original is a floral Sheepra of sorts, but I think it has a profoundly masculine rugged kind of facet to it and it pairs extremely well with the uh, Big Shave Southwest. So PAA Big Shave Southwest and Stetson Original for number 10. Coming in at number 9 we have Mystic Water, Bergamot, Cedar, and Juniper, and Clubman Gents Gin. And both of these are obviously juniper heavy. They're very crisp and very refreshing scents. Both of them are. The Mystic Water is far more uh, wood heavy because of that cedar, but when I chase it with the Clubman Gents Gin, it gives this profoundly refreshing and uh, almost menthol cooling sort of effect to the shave. So that'll be number nine is Mystic Water, Bergamot Cedar Juniper, and Clubman Gents Gin. Coming in at number eight, we have Ariana and Evans The City and Central Texas Soaps Tobacco and Amber. So A&E The City is sandalwood and oud, obviously, and it's very woody, slightly dark, I think, my personal opinion. And the Central Texas Soaps, uh, Tobacco and Amber, is a bit sweeter and maybe even a little bit resinous, but for some reason I think they complement each other quite well. So when I'm reaching for one, I'll tend to reach for the other. So Ariana and Evans The City and Central Texas Soaps, Tobacco and Amber for number eight. Coming in at number seven, we have Castle Forbes, 1445. I don't know if you can see that because it's very reflective. And Irish Moose. So Castle Forbes, 1445, is a aromatic fougere. And I think it's quite natural smelling. Whereas Irish Moose is much greener. It's an aromatic green fragrance. And it's quite cologne smelling, I think. But this is another one of those where when I, whenever I'm wanting to do a shave with 1445, for some reason, this is just what I grab. I just love chasing that with Irish Moose. So Castle Forbes 1445 and Irish Moose. At number six, we have Holy Cow, Monaco Royale, and Mr. Taylor's from Taylorville Bond Street. Now, Monaco Royale is another aromatic fougere, but this one is much more citrus and amber heavy. I really like this one. And Mr. Taylor's is a quintessential aromatic fougere. It's very lavender and geranium heavy, so. But I think it complements the uh, Monaco Royale quite well. And these actually share a substantial amount of notes. On paper, they do anyway. So for number six, we have Monaco Royale and Mr. Taylor's. At number five, we have Declaration Grooming Unconditional Surrender and Mirsol, Don Carlos, 1972. So, Declaration Grooming, Chatien Lux, Unconditional Surrender. This one is all black tea and cigar tobacco, and it's woody, and it's vetivery, and it's rugged. 
It's based on uh, Ulysses S. Grant is what it was inspired by. And Don Carlos, 1972, is a totally different scent. It's a citrus-heavy barbershop sort of thing. And it's reminiscent of um, Katie's Bubbles Tonsorial Parlor. It smells almost exactly the same, in my personal opinion, to that. So these don't smell very similar to each other, but it's another one of those, uh, whenever I'm in the mood for this, I seem to be in the mood for this. So Declaration Grooming Unconditional Surrender and Mirasol Don Carlos 1972 for number five. Coming in at number four, we have Moon Old School and WSP Black Amber Vanille. So Moon Old School, this one is all mahogany, vanilla, vetiver, leather, stuff like that. It's a very animated scent, I think. It's kind of a, a cartoonish representation of itself, but I really, really like this scent. Uh, Moon Old School, and then WSP Black Amber, Amber Vanille is much sweeter, more amber heavy. Actually, no. It's vanilla heavy. I think the uh, amber and the vanilla are competing with each other kind of on the same level. But it's a very sweet uh, vanilla type fragrance. And it pairs very well with the Moon Old School. So, Moon Old School for number four. And WSP Black Amber Vanille. Okay, we're in the top three. And this one is going to be through the Fire Z28 and First Canadian Satsumo for number three. So let's talk about Z28 for a second. This is a very strongly scented um, orange soda, orange zest kind of thing. Excellent smelling soap, excellent. High scent strength, it's just a blast of orange zest and it's, it's fantastic. And then First Canadian Satsumo is an orange orange spicy sort of scent. It's really spicy. It's got, if I didn't know any better, I'd say it has cinnamon in it. Maybe it does. I don't know the notes are in this, but it kind of smells like orange cinnamon a little bit, but these two complicate, or <laughs> complicate, my goodness, complement each other quite well. So for number three, we have Through the Fire Z28 and First Canadian Satsumo, complicating the situation for number three. Coming in at number two, we have Murphy and McNeil, Gail Locke, and Floyd Vigoroso. So let's talk about Murphy and McNeil for a second. This Gail Locke is, it's like a very refined and sophisticated version of Old Spice. Think, if Old Spice went to Harvard or Oxford, it would come out smelling like this. It's just an extremely refined, mature, slightly spicy scent and Floyd Vigoroso is a really old school peppery old-timey almost fuddy-duddy kind of different animal but like I said whenever whenever I use Gale Lock it's one of those where it's just like I grab one and I just, I just gotta grab this one because it's good stuff so Murphy and McNeil, Gail Locke, and Floyd Vigoroso for number two. And finally, my number one favorite shaving soap and aftershave mismatch is Cooper and French Leading Man and Ariana and Evans Platinum. So Cooper and French Leading Man is quite a complex scent. It's woody, it's leathery, it's citrusy. There's patchouli in here, the peppercorn in here. But both of these, this and the Ariana and Evans Platinum just scream elegance and sophistication and success. The Ariana and Evans Platinum is uh, inspired by Chanel Platinum. So both of these are just the most sophisticated smelling scents that I've ever seen. I mean, uh, both of these separated. Uh, wouldn't be my personal favorite, but you put them together and it's just a recipe for an amazing smelling shave, I'm telling you. So Cooper and French Leading Man and Ariana and Evans Platinum for number one. All right, I want to thank everybody for watching and I hope you enjoyed this top 10 list. So before we get out of here, let's tag a couple of people. Why don't we, why don't we go straight to the top and tag Mr. Chris Bailey from IMCDB. I'm sure he, he's got a 
enough stuff in his collection to pull off something like this. And who else do we want to tag? Why don't we tag uh, Mr. Sig Solo? See if he can come up with a uh, top 10 or a top 5 uh, mismatches that he would uh, really appreciate. So that'll be the video for today. I want to thank everybody for watching. And until next time, this is Soap Thing telling you, shave like you mean it. Thanks for watching.